Hey, how's it going? I hope that you're doing wonderful. I've just been thinking about the beauty that is um, being, 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 being hidden from everyone else. Because in this world, we have to understand that uh, the continent with the longest history, which owes the most to uh, humanity, the oldest specimen of our survival, is actually um, Africa. And understanding Africa is understanding uh, the world's first utopia. And a utopia is a world that is perfect. So um, when you look at this place, we're in, a, we're in an environment that is uh, called a fallen world because uh, there are people who fight and things like that. But um, when you look into Africa, you'd see that uh, this society was the best society that has ever been on the face of the earth so the word ethiopia actually just means black skinned ethiopia means utopia so this place was the most advanced uh, civilization uh, because of um, the way that um, <clears throat> civilization came from the knowledge of science the knowledge of spirit the knowledge of self the knowledge of god Self-awareness, this is where it all happened. The knowledge of fire, which is thermal, heat, dynamics, moving fire. So the first fire benders were here. Uh, this was the first place with the oldest uh, book on theology. This was the idea of um, creation in the, in the Memphis theology. This was the first place with the um, idea of mathematics which is now um, um, a papyrus, which is the first place with the first piece of paper, which is um, in Russian museums. This was the first place with uh, medical um, uh, practices. In fact, uh, Cleopatra's uh, son called um, uh, Young Caesar was the first person who had a caesarean operation performed on him. This is why it's still called a caesarean operation today but it was performed in Africa, it was performed in Ethiopia. So Ethiopia means utopia. So Ethiopia is the, um, is the understanding of the motherland, of the whole country. Ethiopia is a place that is uh, omnipresent. So understanding it is understanding that when the Bible is mentioning Ethiopia, it's not mentioning a place, it's mentioning a land. So we have never had these borders and things like that. These are fictional. So uh, the only thing that was real is the real estate, which is the land. And the whole Bible is talking about real estate. So this uh, land, Ethiopia, where the black kings were, the utopians. So these uh, people actually came from Niger and Nigeria. They came from the lakes. And uh, this was the Nyanza or the Nyasa. And um, they came from there. And they and they and they went to uh, Ethiopia. From there, they uh, established uh, kingdoms such as Kush, uh, such as Punt, such as Aksum, such as Kemet, um, and some other kingdoms in Mali. And they also had the Moorish kingdoms. And uh, further down, they had uh, some of the Bantu kingdoms. So Bantu means people. So these were the 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 people of Ethiopia, everyone who's black skinned, which is tall people, short people, and all of these people. So <clears throat> so through this, we have um, people who used to come to Ethiopia, and these people are Greek people who used to come to Ethiopia, and they were educated by these Nubians. So Bantus are Nubians, these Nubians are just black people, and these are Egyptians, these are Kemetic, these are Moors. These are uh, Swazi people. All of these people are Nubians. And uh, they are the people who are actually educating these uh, people in all of the information that they had. So when you are actually reading Aristotle, what he is telling you is, um, is an Ethiopian, utopian teaching that is being uh, expressed in, an, in a Greek... Um, frame of reference because they all came to Africa so what happened is um, at a certain point uh, Alexander the Great was so great or apparently so to speak so great that um, he was able to conquer Egypt so when he uh, came to Egypt he conquered it 
and then he uh, removed the pharaohs and uh, through that he was actually in charge of this land um, this is what we understand as colonization this is what we understand as annexation so to annex so this uh, place was annexed so when you annex something what are you doing so it was annexed and uh, to the extent that uh, Aristotle moved his school into the great library the the greatest uh, library that was in that uh, ancient world was in <clears throat> in Alexandria so he moved his uh, people there and it, it was first of all a research lab and then it didn't fit the purpose and then he moved more Greeks there because they just had to cross the Mediterranean he moved more Greece, Greeks there and then they actually had a university there because this was the source of all of the information and all of the knowledge and all of these things. So uh, to the point where he just uh, kept some of these books and rewrote them as his own books. These are the Aristotle um, uh, things that he writes as him. But these are actually things that he just found in Africa. So Africa has such a diversity of... Um, of 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 spirituality the the most uh striking thing about every african society is the ability to connect with god and uh, this is stressed in the in the in the fact that uh, people are vanu so this um humanity this is what we call uh, humanity, which is has the word human in it the same way that uh, this word um, um, uh, Ubuntu has the word uh, Ubuntu in it, which is people in it, which is Munu, Muntu, everyone, Muntu. And Muntu actually comes from the word moon. So the, the, the African creation stories that uh, speak about how God was just unseparated from everything, like he was the moon, and this moon is the man, Munu is the moon. So these are the common languages that come from the same place because um this is how we are uh this is how we are a reflection of the sun of god because we are the moon the moon the moon so everyone is this moon because he is a reflection of the sun because we actually get our an information and our understanding this information comes into our hearts and bodies and then we're illuminated enlightened by the moon like the moon and we are a moon Ubuntu. Everyone is a person, a Munu. So every man is uh, being uh, 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 lit by the sun. So this is just a basic understanding of what uh, a Munu is, a person is. So um, <clears throat> so understanding that uh, it, there, was, there, was, there was such a rich, rich and uh, a very diverse uh, spirituality that was uh, interlinked and interconnected into everything that a person would do. This was... Um, really um forgotten and uh it was usurped annexed is the correct word and through this they actually uh gave aristotle a lot of these books in the library of alexandria but they also burnt the library so this library had so many of the greatest books in the world because this was an african library so it had the oldest books in the world but even up to today the oldest book in the british museum is um is um this book that t talks about the the uh, story of creation these uh, african kings who wrote these books because the thing is um these egyptians had uh, statues so these statues if they were to actually propound the fact the truth and to just say the truth that all right yeah the, f the oldest book in the world is uh written by a man called pat hotep pat motep um, if they were to say that, then you're just going to Google Pat Motep, Hotep, Pat Ho Hotep, and then um, you're going to see that he's actually a black person who's writing about a creator, God, who is just another black person, actually a pygmy. So um, this is a short black person, and these pygmies were actually the first people who were in the, in the whole continent. So these pygmies mixed with the Bantus and uh, these are the current races that we have. So the first person is at the 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 pat, which is um, the understanding of Ethiopia, understanding of um, 
this utopia. So this utopia was focused on the understanding of God, of uh, the whole society, and of understanding um, uh, knowledge. Because when you have the word science, what you actually have is the word uh, sire. So sire has two meanings. So sire means to have knowledge of, which is to know something. So uh, consciousness is science. So um, when when uh, we say that the Africans were the first scientists, they were the first people who were conscious. And um, not only were they just conscious, awake and breathing, they were the first people to be aware of their self-consciousness. So um, the, the people who... Um, Socrates is regarded as the world's first philosopher, which is um, the person who's um, accredited with the words know thyself, which is the first understanding of science, that to know thyself is to know the universe and the gods. So this was a basic understanding of the African science, which was um, science is to sire, and science is to cut up. And um, <clears throat> Africa is a scientific place because that word Africa is actually uh, erroneously placed. It's actually the utopia, not Africa. But Africa means afar and it also means a freak, which means to cut up. So science means to cut up like a scissors. And um, Africa means to be cut up because it was cut up. But this is actually because of the science in this place. So um, Understanding that uh, all of these things happen because of a certain racist agenda is something that uh, really, really breaks my heart. Because it just means that the whole reason why people wouldn't know this or the whole reason why people did this was fueled by um, a fact of uh, uh, primal base and, and misdirected... Um, uh, hatred or uh, underdevelopment of mind, which is not only moving the whole world, one race backward, but it's moving the whole world backward because now we don't have certain innovations that we're supposed to have. For example, we have uh, the first binary computer, actually the first binary computer system being, being, um, being, uh, in, it actually emerges out of Africa. So there are these people who use the sand. So these are called the sand diviners, right? So they actually just make uh, binary code in sand. And through this, they are able to tell certain future calculations through binary code. So they were actually using a natural, a natural computer system. So this is the understanding of the science and the... And the, and, the, and, the, and the advancement of this age, like that they were actually developing a computer that is f purely natural. So this uh, binary system was actually uh, like King Richard the Eighth, I think. He's, he's actually one of the kings who actually saw this system. But ultimately, this uh, binary system was was changed from one to two because this is how it starts. You just have odd and even, so it's a, it's an understanding of Adam and Eve. So uh, you have this odd and even understanding, and uh, through this you have <clears throat> you have the whole um, system that they took and then they created it as zero and one instead of odd and even, and now it's zero and one instead of one and two. But uh, this is the binary, the two. So this was actually just developed in um, in 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 in, in uh, Tanzania, okay? In Tanzania, this is where this uh, binary system is actually developed out of. And um, when you look at the ancient game of African chess, this is actually just looking at these beads and how these numbers are converging. So these people were mathematicians, they were scientists, they were all of these things. And uh, through this understanding, they were able to interpret the world in a very different way. That they had um, abilities that would seem to be uh, superhuman because of the things that they knew. Because they had this knowledge that was really eternal. So even when they used to build their houses, like when you look at um, 
a great monument like uh, the Great Zimbabwe Monument, what you're actually looking at is stone. And stone is the tones. So this whole house was actually built because it was a place of worship. So this was a golden place of worship. And uh, these people were the prophets and they created profit. So these prophets, because a prophet is able to give you capital, he's able to prophesy, like he's able to tell you what's going to happen. And these people were the people of the bird, the eagle, the fish eagle. The fish is the money, the eagle is the sight. So they were the fish eagle people. And they were able to actually, um, um, they were the, 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 the ones who were the, the, the prophets. So it's a very, very holy place. And these stones are the stones. They remember in uh, the wilderness, the water came from the rock. So the water comes from that rock. This is the fish eagle. Because it's the fish and the eagle, the fish in the water and the eagle in the sky. So this is um, that that understanding of that deep spirituality that they had, and uh, this was just a land of gold, a land of God, because uh, the city of God is paved in gold. So this city was uh, paved like this was the golden city. So understanding that uh, they were also the people who were uh, developing this um, uh, African game of chess, this intellectual practice that like sitting under a tree and then they're actually doing this, uh, these mathematical uh, equations, you know, they're just doing this on the fly. And um, this is just something that uh, is typical in so many, in so many, in so, in so, in so many places. And... Yeah, so it's, it's, it's something that when you know this, then you know the latent and dormant power that you have. Like, I've always not liked school because, like, I, I didn't, like, it just used to bore me and and all of these things. But I, I always knew that, like, I have this uh, hunger for knowledge and this thirst to understand other things. But then you don't get that in these uh, European systems because they are a replica of the true thing. And understanding yourself is understanding Ethiopia, the utopia. So this was a utopia because it was a perfect city, like a perfect world. Utopia was the first utopia. So these were Nubian kings, Negus, the Negus, and they they came from the waters. All of these waters is where they came from. So some of them were coming from the uh, Lake Chad lakes, and then they, 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 they came to the Nile. Some of them went up the Nile. Some of them went down the Nile to Tanganyika, and some of them uh, actually left Egypt, uh, left uh, Ethiopia, um, to uh, the the Middle East. Some of them left um, through Spain, and um, one of the biggest <coughs> kingdoms, the Spanish kingdoms, was actually African controlled. So this is the Moorish Empire. So there's a lot of information on the Moors. So if you actually read up on them, you see like they were a big deal in the world. And they did a lot of stuff. So understanding this uh, utopia mindset is just going to give you a different understanding of uh, the true power. You know, the true power of your mind, the true power of the people in this world. And just understanding um, what it all means. So yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, your knowledge is power, right? Knowledge is power. So let knowledge reign supreme over everything you do. And this would be currency. This would be power. This would be electric. <laughs>